I just felt that I must remind you about the teaching that we got quite a while ago. I know you remember what we talked about in 2017, but um, there were, was a year word about waiting on God. A year word, and please, we will make sure, and if you have the calendar, I hope some of you guys, you kept the, the teachings of the calendars, praise the Lord for that. May God bless you, the rest we forgive you, and um, please get the teachings, um, we later will ask you, but there's a summarized about 12 teachings about waiting on God and the impact of that, what needs to happen in our waiting on God. But if we, in the next or tomorrow in some other session, are going to take time in the waiting, I want just to give you a few of how do we wait. The word was wait, fly, soar. Remember, that was the year word. We summarized that year of teaching with the three words, wait, fly, soar. In the waiting, I will be tested and I will make the decision to fly. But sometimes I will fly like an ostrich and uh, praise the Lord, God will help me. It will look like a circus. Sometimes it will be your own performance. It will be a thing of, okay, let me try this, let me try that. And then it's a mess up. And sometimes I'm flying, but I'm totally, the, what's the word? Drained. I'm totally finished. Sometimes fed up, sometimes finished. Hello? But uh, praise God, I can go back into the basics for, of waiting. Waiting and I try to fly. F waiting, fly. Waiting, fly. Until I s become so sensitive, so sensitive. Everybody say so sensitive in the spirit, that is waiting and soaring. Waiting and soaring. I just know how to wait on God, and then when I'm out of the place of waiting, I'm soaring. On the wind, know the spirit. Hello. And the storm will give me energy. The things that I will go through, and maybe went through, but go through, you will not fight the storm anymore. But when you only fly and you try to fly, then it's, I must come against all these storms in my life. I must come against all this stuff, all this stuff happening. But God wants to bring us into that place, my brother, my sister, that because of the waiting, because of the waiting, because of the wisdom of the wise virgin, the wisdom of the wise builder. When the storm comes, wise builder, the house will stand, the house is a testimony. Because of the wisdom, you will find the oil, and that what will it be? When God is meeting up with me, I need the oil of the Holy Spirit. Hear this sentence. Foolish virgin is when you meet Jesus and when Jesus is going to do a lot of things. He's going to build his church and shake the nations next year and going beyond that. And when you meet in that place, when God is doing that and you are found without the fullness of the Holy Spirit, you're not going to do what to do. You're going to, not going to know what to do. The wise virgin were the extra oilies. That extra oil is you understand the Spirit. You have the flow of the Spirit. The wind is there. It's not like you're sitting on the, on the mountain and you see everything happening. But there's no wind to do this and to go with the Holy Spirit. I don't know how to do this. I never practiced it. I never tried. And now I'm sitting with that turmoil inside of me. Wise virgin. Wise virgin. That extra, well, why? Why? No, I, I, I cannot enter the door because I don't see the door because I have no oil in my lamp. But, but, but they were knocking on the door in vain. So they knew where the door was. 
Um, hello? But you cannot meet with Jesus. You cannot work with him. You cannot see what he's doing and go with him and do it with him. You cannot stand in his agenda. It's not possible without the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Meet that, see that in a foolish way. Or meet him, see what he's going to do. But I'm, not, I'm a spectator, I'm not part of it because I don't know how to walk in the Spirit. I don't know the fullness of the Spirit. I, I'm not aware of, he's so speaking to me that the other voices, I just know this is not God, this is God. I open the word and suddenly the revelation is just coming and coming and coming and coming. The word is just exploding. Don't open the word because it's just going to explode. That's when the Holy Spirit is so, when that extra oil is there, you touch the word and it's exploding. You, you touch prayer and the presence is just there. You make that decision and you experience God's support. That is when I understand I'm busy with, you know, that like that electrician, he, ma he knows there's a lot of power here. I must be careful. But a lot of them who really know what they are doing, it's not standing there in fear. They know how, what to deal with this enormous amount of electricity, enormous amount of power. Because they have a wisdom Somewhere they've been trained with a little and with more and with more and with more and with more. They just know. May God give us the wisdom. May we have the wisdom to be open to be trained. To be open to how to wait on him. Mr. Eagle. Miss Eagle. Mrs. Eagle. Are you with me? May you know that, may you know that in Jesus' name. Okay, how are you going to wait so that you can fly, so that you can soar, and so that the storm will work for you, and you're not a result of the storm. You're not a dear makar, you're not messed up because of the storm, but the storm, and you drew the storm in your heart, you drew the storm in your mind, you drew the storm in your flesh, and what you think and where your heart is, there's a storm. There's a storm. You know, there can be a lot of storms, but the difference is what can you do with the storm? Can the storm work for you? Because all things can work for the good, for those who love God. And even the storm is supposed to work for you. You must write that down. The storm must work for me. Daar so ook sommer. Sommer het mooi neerskryf, in tik in die foon. Daar sê, great. The storm must work for me. Are you with me? God's going to help us in Jesus' name. So that I can soar. And from that place, I will know there's the snake. I must deal with that in Jesus' name, with my authority given by God. With the authority given from God, I will not fear the snake. I will deal with the snake. The snake can become my food. Where do we find that in? Numbers. What did he say? <laughs> in Asia. <laughs> now, we find that in Numbers 13 and 14. Hallelujah. <laughs> where, <laughs> where Joshua and Caleb said, the giants, they are our food. That what we think is going to kill us. That snake that you think can, can kill you. That's that giant that can kill you. No, the giant's going to be my food. Joshua and Caleb said, they spoke like an eagle to a snake. Hello. Spoke. As eagles, they spoke when they thought about this, the giant. Hello. So today... Eagle, speak to the snakes. Say, you are my food. That thing that, you, that can intimidate you, 
the thing and can put your heart full of, with a lot of poison and the poison in your heart of bitterness and judgment and self-justification. Why you will not? You tried it and it didn't work and this happened and that happened. Uh, and the snake is waiting for your destruction. The enemy is waiting for your destruction. As long as you put the bitterness and the issue and, and honor that thing and embracing the poison in your heart, honoring the poison instead of getting it out. Oh, come on. So the fight with whoever, with your child, with your brother, with your sister, with your husband, with your wife, with your mom, with your dad, with whoever. May God help you. May God help me. Amen. Amen. Now, we're going we're gonna to wait. And waiting will become what? A lifestyle. First of all, through prayer. You can write there prayer. And you can write with prayer as you write prayer. You can uh, go with Matthew 21, 13. My house will be called a house of prayer. For you are make, but you are making it a den of robbers. In the waiting, in the waiting, when you come into prayer, God wants the wheeling and the dealing in your heart, how you will deal with it, how you will bargain with God and bargain with your heart, where you, you bargain that my heart I will put here or my heart will be in that. So the den of robbers is what can I get out of it, but it's to my benefit and not necessarily for any benefit of that person. Then I'm robbing. I'm setting myself up to be a robber. For what will benefit me? Even in prayer, how must it benefit me? These guys, they came to the temple. They came to the presence of God. And there, where they were with God, in his temple, not the devil's temple. In his temple. They came, but it was about robbing. It was about me. It's not, let me steal the candle. Let me steal that in the temple. <laughs> no. They provided the doves and they provided this that was necessary for the temple. But it was about making money out of it. What is my agenda in my prayer? What is my agenda in his presence? What is my agenda in his presence when we talk about the waiting? My house will be called a house of prayer. But it says a house of prayer for the nations in the other, in the other books. This was Matthew, but Mark, Luke, John. Look at all of that. House of prayer for the nations where it's about them. Where you stand in the gap, not first of all, a house of prayer for you. A house of prayer for you. No, a house of prayer for the nations. Collectively. Amen. God will help you in your waiting that you come with an unselfish attitude. Not an attitude, first of all, I need an answer, but the answer is focused on me. Respect prayer in your communication. Prayer as communication with God, as positioning with God. Prayer, I position myself. In the Old Testament, this is where you position yourself. This is the house of prayer for the nations. You go there, you look towards the temple. Hello? You bring there an offering. You position yourself there in His presence. Now today... I position myself with a focus from here, from my spirit. So you will submit to spirit. Body, I will beat my body and bring it in submission. And in that place, I position myself in prayer. So that this temple will not be a den of robbers. There's a lot of thieves in your temple if you allow them. There's a lot of thieves that bitterness in your heart in the temple is a thief. You're allowing a robber that is robbing you from an intimate, excellent relationship with God. Don't allow the robbers, the issue in the flesh, 
Your wrestle is against flesh and blood. Against that guy, against that guy, against yourself. That you don't accept, that you don't love yourself, that you don't accept yourself, that you don't honor your life that God has given you. But you rob yourself from this relationship with God. And in this relationship, it's about what he wants. He wants a thousand times more. He wants a relationship with you than what you want a relationship with him. Don't rob God and position yourself as a thief. God is talking about his house where I can position myself in his house as a thief, as a robber. Don't allow your soul, your emotions, your intellect to become robbers. To rob God from that intimacy that you can have with him now. God cannot have what he wants now. And you will try and rob him from that. No. Oh. We will not do it purposefully. But what belongs to him? The focus on his word. I will rob him from that focus. I will give it to my issue. I will give it to my request. I will give it to what I desire. I will give it to that. I will not give it to God. I can give him now a respect. I can give him now a certain level of integrity from my side. Through the Holy Spirit. I can give him a certain focus. I can give him the word. I can give him attention. Attention in the sense of, God, what are you saying to me while he is speaking? What are you saying to me when I'm out there in nature? What are you saying to me when I'm enjoying? What are you saying to me when I'm sitting before the TV? What are you saying to me when I'm chilling out there? I'm not saying 24-7, the whole time you must be in prayer. But it needs to become a lifestyle. Sometimes, sometimes his house will be a house of prayer. And sometimes I will give a different definition to his house. <laughs> now, in a permanent state of a lifestyle, his house will be a house of prayer. Are you with me? Because... <laughs> The prayer is alive in you. Your relationships, what you thought about God, what you prayed about, what you and God experienced is now alive in you. Alive in you. Alive in you. You have an experience, you had a bad experience with a person. In your relationship with your parents, with a brother, with a sister, with a leader, with your wife, with your husband. And that thing is now alive in you. Alive in you. And the bitterness, that robber is alive in you. And you will allow the robber. You will have a relationship with the robber. You will honor the robber. And whatever the robber will tell you, here you will give your heart, here not. Here you will give your face. Here you will close your heart. That relationship didn't work out and you will justify because you are having this, or nearly say a hell of a relationship with this robber in the house of God. In the temple of God. So in this week, let's deal with the robbers. In our waiting on God, let's deal with the robbers. Amen. But who makes it? The devil. No. We make it a den of robbers. We make his temple a den of thieves. We allow the thieves and have relationship with the thief. Even I know that this thief that is alive in me, this rejection, this fear of rejection, this fear that people will reject me, this fear that my image will not be good, that people will laugh at me, this fear, all this anxiety, this stress, this negativity. You're allowing the robber of negativity. So the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm very sorry. I have an intimate relationship with a thief. I have an intimate relationship with a robber. And this robber tells me, you will not experience the joy of the Lord as your strength. And I agree with it. Because I'm faithful to that thief in this temple. Not anymore in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 
Don't be faithful to your negativity. Don't be faithful to the pessimistic. No, that's my personality. Biggest lot of rubbish. No. Come on, let's clean the temple. God is so ready to clean up the temple with his church. In time, yeah, we need the fear of God. We need the fear of God because God will just start with his church to make his church ready before he deals with the enemy, before he deals and shake heaven and earth, before everything will be burned away, burned away. We haven't seen fire yet, but God first wants the fear of God in the church because the fear, before the fear for God to run away will be shaking heaven and earth, before heaven and earth will be burned away. First time it was with the water, and God said, never again will the nations be drowned, will the nations die through the water, and the remnant will go through with the ark. Second time, it will happen again, but with fire. Heaven and earth will pass away as through fire. But when the fear of God, when the fire of Holy Spirit is in you, you will not fear the fire out there. The fire of judgment will not be on you when the fire of God is in you. Are you with me? But God help you, God help me. We must get the destructive fires out of our life. Make sure you deal with the fire, destructive fires in the temple and around the temple. Hallelujah. My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. Then, yeah. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, you know that, Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That place of peace, that place of safety with God. If I can get into that place in my waiting, in my waiting on God, if I can get into that place where God promised me that His peace will protect me, His peace will protect your heart when you need to face the storm, when you need to get out there and deal with the rubbish. Uh, hello. When the robber wants to enter, you will tell him, no, sorry. Because you can identify. You watch that, what these guys are saying and that guys are saying on, on the tube, or on uh, Mr. Google and Mrs. Siri or whatever. You are watching those stuff. Are you hearing and honoring what the robber is saying? You need to hear, is God saying that? Is God agreeing with what this guy is saying? Oh, but he's a professional. Oh, but he's this. Oh, but he's that. Okay, great. The wisdom of the world can be foolishness with God. The wisdom of the world can be foolishness with God. The wisdom. Not wisdom of the world means everybody in a natural way, you included, can recognize it as wisdom. The first thought in your mind, wow, this is wisdom. This is, this is wonderful. This is great. He didn't say all that stupid ideas. All those stupid ideas, that's foolishness. No, all the, the clever ideas in the world is foolishness with God. That means, God, I put this before you. Why? Because it can be. It's not necessarily so. But it can be foolishness. But what do you say about it? Is it foolishness? Or even that guy in the world, what he spoke was the wisdom of God without even knowing it. So that guy in the world could say something that is wisdom from God. Hello? But you better evaluate it because the fear of God is on your life. 
That's the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs says, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of God. Why? You evaluate wisdom because you have respect for God. You're not going to go just respect what that guy is saying. It looks like wisdom. It looks like, wow, this is the answer. Wow, this is great. This is an excellent idea. It looks like that. But that good ideas, that intellectual, wow, excellent plan, that summarized wisdom, the word says, is foolishness with God. You go and evaluate. Amen? So that with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, when you come in prayer and you put it before God, you say, thank you, don't nag. You must keep yourself in prayer, but it doesn't mean nagging. Are you with me? It doesn't mean you are nagging. Prayer and petition. Supplication. Is that the other word? With intense focus. With intense focus. Intense focus. Uh, please, Lord. Yeah. You know? No nagging. That's an attitude. A bad attitude. No, not with that. But you put it before the Lord. And by faith, you're keeping it there. You're keeping it there. With prayer. With supplication with intensity with a focus you you've placed it there is there and by faith it's you have it there you keep it there you keep it there by faith not by nagging not by asking the whole time over and over and over but it's there but it's there by faith because God will speak about it but in his way in his time according to him, about the theme of what you've asked. And if you do that with thanksgiving, not with moaning, that thanksgiving is to make sure that you will not become frustrated, irritated, because you don't see the answer. You've prayed about this, you've prayed about this, you've prayed about this, there's no answer. How will you protect yourself against the irritation, the frustration, the discouragement, the negativity, the pessimistic attitude that start to come in, you protect yourself with thanksgiving. After you prayed, in that process to have patience for whenever, 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 thanksgiving, giving thanks, giving thanks in all circumstances for everything, because everything can work for the good to those and for those who love him. So in everything, for everything, giving thanks, keeping yourself in a place where you will deal, where you can deal with frustration, where you are protected against the frustration, the negativity, depression, the, all that other huaras. God must help me. I'm definitely not there yet, but in Jesus' name, we're all going to grow in this. Amen. And let's use the corporate anointing together where two or more agree. This week, two or more agree. This is not just time with God. This is when we are waiting and have a whole session of waiting. You are waiting with another 10, 20, 30 with the same focus and where two or more agree in the waiting. There's ex that extra strength. One, a thousand. Two, ten thousand. We deal with the robbers. But we can deal with 10,000 robbers, not just 1,000 robbers. Because if we are together in unity, where two or more agree, it will come to pass. Where two or more are in my presence, in my name, I will be there. God as king with authority says, when you two agree in my authority, it will come to pass. I will have the final say and it will happen. Authority, kings. Kings, kings in unity. But when you come together in my name, I will be there. Priests, priests, you will forever reign as kings and priests. Kingdom of priests, you guys, we, are you with me? <sighs> Let him enter in his special way. Okay, I'm positioned in peace. That's a place of safety. Prayer as positioning, I'm positioned in the peace. You can write there positioned in peace, that place of safety.
because we say prayer is positioning, but here's one excellent example of how in prayer, you're getting with thanksgiving, through thanksgiving, get into the place of safety, get into the place of peace, because in that place of peace, it's not the, it is not where everything is finished. That's where your thoughts are getting sorted out, because only in that place of peace, with a lot of waramampara thoughts still in your head and in your heart, there, Paul says, now, then, now, after you've done this and coming into this place of peace, now think upon these things. Verse 8. Get your thoughts in line. Now your thought life can come in line. Now you can deal. Now you can deal with those rubbish that come your way in your thought life. Positioned in peace, place of safety. From that place, deal with those other thoughts and get God's thoughts in your soul. Lord, I love the house where you live, the place where your glory dwells. Psalm 26 verse 8. I love your house. The house will not be a house for the den of robbers for whatever I need. I don't first bring my request. But I come to the house of God because I love his house. I love his presence in this house. Let's say, I love his presence in this house. Let it be so in Jesus' name. That you don't, first of all, love your opinion, love your desire, love your way of thinking, love it to throw a tantrum. No, you don't love it. Well, if you do, we do it a lot, uh, we must love it. If we hate it, we will... Deal with it and get it away, out of sight. <sighs> Hallelujah. Not going to help us. Amen. Where are we? 10 to 11. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I just wanted to do an introduction and do something else. Introduction is eight points. I'm finished with the first one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How will you position yourself before God? First of all, prayer. How will you wait? In your waiting, it's about prayer. But then through prayer, the next one that's built upon that, thoughts. You will wait on God by getting your thought life. Now that was what we ended with, eh? Verse 8 of Philippians 4, verse 8. How can you focus for an hour? When we are talking here, yeah. When we, you receive teaching, when I receive teaching to myself, that's part of a waiting. I'm hearing God and I'm waiting, waiting on Him. What is He saying? God, what are you saying? What are you saying? I'm waiting to understand. I'm waiting to see more of Him. I'm waiting for Him to touch me. I'm waiting for Him to share His heart. I'm waiting. That has to do with this expectation. You with me? Thoughts. Yes, my soul find rest. My soul. Soul is my thoughts, my emotions, my will. Find rest in God. My hope comes from Him. We have that year word, hope. Psalm 62, verse 6. You've written that down. Hallelujah. Yes, my soul find rest. In the waiting I must come to a place of rest. You need to enter my rest, God said. He wants to give you his rest. They will not enter my rest. They will not find the place of peace and safety in my presence with me. Or we will find and enter his rest if my soul find it in God. Yes, my soul, my emotions will find rest. Your emotions will find rest. Your thought life, your issues, your, your that fighting, you will find rest in God. For your hope, you decide that your hope will come from Him. Your hope will not come when the issue, everything is sorted out. Your hope will not come when you understand everything. Your hope will not come when that person said sorry. Your hope will not come. Your hope is in God. Finish. So there's hope in here. That's why I can find rest, even though 
a lot of stuff is not yet in line. Amen. We wait in hope. Psalm 33, verse 20. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Let's say, I wait in hope for the Lord. It's not just too many times I wait in hope to find the answer. I wait in hope that God will speak to me whatever he wants to speak to me when I've put this on the table. The thing about my relationships or my heart. And then God speaks to me about emotions and this and this. And that's not what I asked. Let him speak what he wants to speak to you when you put that theme, that agenda on the table. Amen. My soul will rest. Hallelujah. Let me take this off. My soul will rest. Okay. Psalm 1 verse 2. And who meditates on his law day and night. We're talking about waiting. Waiting. Everybody say waiting. You are waiting by meditating. I will wait. Everybody, I will wait through meditating on his word. Amen. So first thing, prayer. That's even praying in tongues. Go for prayer in tongues for an hour or two even if you need to. But where you are with God, you are before him. You become silent before the Lord. That's all in prayer. Hello? But secondly, you are meditating on his word. You are reading that scripture over and over and over again. Now you're getting your thoughts in line. Thoughts in line. We are, we are talking about waiting through our thoughts. Oh, come on, guys. How many times your thoughts are so all over the place? We're going to deal with that. I was so um, shocked. In a certain time, oh, 25 years ago, when for a whole month I were, I were not allowed to speak at all, not one word, because of uh, my, my, my stem bands. But this is my stem bander, my vocal cords. And uh, the specialist said, not a word for a month. Now you stand in worship, and then I'm so shocked that I hear that I'm not with my heart into those words. I'm not singing with my heart and my mind, with my thoughts. When I see I'm busy with these thoughts, that's where that teaching about worship came from, about my focus. My focus. What is the song coming, reaching heaven? Is when, you, when we sing a song, but you are so busy with the other lot of rubbish, you are teaching yourself, sitting here, but you're busy with a lot of other rubbish. You're teaching yourself how not to have respect for God so that you can walk out here and you have less respect for God. And the devil is excited after this session or after that service because you, conscience had less and less and less to say about the fact that you don't sit with respect and you are actively busy in your heart and in your mind with the thoughts of God and to get your thoughts in line with his thoughts. So, I will wait in my thought life by meditating on his word, not reading his word, not just memorizing. Memorizing. Hello. The devil... In some other way, I don't know how he did it, but he memorized. I mean, he can take any scripture and pull it out. Pharisees, they memorize the word. But once I say, you don't touch the word without the spirit. You don't touch the word without the spirit. Eagle, you're going to jump, but you're going to fall. You're going to crash. You're going to crash. And crash is not your life is destroyed. You open the word, you're going to crash. That time with God is going to just be gone. Three minutes, you are frustrated. Or you feel condemned. Or you feel, oh, I'm supposed to. Or your thoughts are totally in a different place. Hello. You need to do it with the Spirit. Amen. Amen. When you meditate, meditate. In the meditation, it's the... It's the words, the thoughts of God with the Holy Spirit. 
It's not just memorizing. Please, don't study word without the Holy Spirit. And who meditates on his law. Everybody say, day and night. And your flesh says, oh, no, what the hell? He's going to meditate on the word again. And you will hear your flesh saying that. No, but not in such bad words. Your flesh is going to say, there's no time now. We will get another time. There will be another time. Okay? But in your meditation, there's a certain waiting, a certain waiting. Because you wait for his presence to manifest through his word. Let's say, I wait for his presence to manifest through his word. And that is in the meditation. That is in meditating. That's in meditation. It's like, I, I, I'm reading about this. I'm reading about the Ferrari, and I'm studying the Ferrari, and I can meditate. Uh, I, can, I mean, I can uh, tell anybody... All these thousand things about the Ferrari. Like you think that guy can take it out in a thousand pieces and put it back together. He knows the Ferrari. But there is no Ferrari. You can memorize the word. But there's no, you can memorize everything about the Ferrari, but there's no Ferrari. But through the word, and if you memorize the, everything about the Ferrari, you are waiting on the Ferrari, hello. Through the word, you are waiting on God. You are waiting on God. Meditate on his law, day and night. And then 2 Corinthians 10, 5, last one about thoughts. And we take captive every thought. Take captive. Everybody say, hey, what are you doing here? No, I just want to hear it with attitude. Hey! What are you doing here? You're taken captive. The policeman comes in and says, Please, will you surrender if you find it suitable for you to surrender, Mr. Thief? I'm here to arrest you. <laughs> That's a joke. That's a clown. Okay. Don't be a clown with the enemy. Don't be a clown with your thoughts. Take it captive. That's a, there's a level of authority and aggression in it. Are you with me? So that rubbish thoughts. Hey, what are you doing here? That issue with that guy. Ah, oh, there it comes again. Hey, what are you doing in here? You're not going to rob from me. You're, not, you're a thief. I declare you a thief, not a friend. Take captive the thoughts. That's part of waiting where you become strong. Those waiting on the Lord, they will soar like eagles. They will become strong. They will become strong, Isaiah says. God says through Isaiah. Those who wait on the Lord, they will renew their strength. You become strong because you are taking captive all the thoughts that are draining you, that are like poison, paralyzing you. Bitterness and negativity that are paralyzing you. You're taking those thoughts captive in your waiting. In your waiting on God. For when He's going to move and you're going to move with Him. He's going to move, you're going to be there. You're going to move with Him. You're going to be a co-worker. You're going to walk with Him. That's going to be eternal life. Even more, more of eternal life tomorrow in your life. Because you are walking with Him. You know Him. Not intellectual knowledge about him. You know him relationship-wise. Okay, are you with me? Oh, okay. Of this introduction of 10 points, we're going to do three. And I'm going for the last one, and then we're going to eat. Because I see some waiting in some eyes about food. Okay, the third one. You are waiting through your attitude. Your attitude. Tell your neighbor, attitude. Uh, sometimes you can see attitude in a very, a very um, many ways. You know you have a certain attitude to a, to a ball that is not round. You know, some of you guys. You know, ragabush, the rugby. And there's a certain attitude that you have, you know. When they go on the field and, and 
you just see this 40, 60, 80,000 uh, guys around. They have a certain attitude, man. And there's just this team spirit. There's just this vibe. You need a certain vibe in your waiting. But why there's some religious vibe going in? You start to speak of the word, about the word and uh, sharing the word and everybody get drowsy. No, we cannot focus beyond 20 minutes. Or when the sermon is going beyond 55 minutes, there's a landing. You can see everybody starting to... And some going to start to get irritated, you know? This is taking too long. I have a China watch. Very good. I think somebody gave it to me to make sure the sermon is not going to go too long. Ah, they think I cannot see that one there. Okay, good. Where are we? Where are we? Your attitude. I watch. Everybody say watch. Well, this one, I watch. In hope for the Lord, because you have a certain attitude, you watch. A certain attitude, you watch that ball. A certain attitude, you love when a hello. You do a certain game. And in certain games, jiggy, jiggy, jiggy. I've seen with, with people, you know, when they do a certain game, you can see they watch, their attention is there. Don't go and say something that can take their attention away. Ooh, 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 puppy. And you could, could see, just with John Dean, you could see a different attitude. Mm. But because there's a, such a loyal attitude, into this game. You know, are you with me? <sighs> and it's a total different attitude when I must read the word or must do my, my work, you know, like when Herman must study, and you know. No, Janine says, no, he has the right attitude. Great. Okay, what are we talking about? Guys, in your waiting, if you have the wrong attitude, there's no waiting on God because you're not respecting. You're not, if you respect Him, there will be a focus. There will be a focus. There will be a focus for His presence. If you respect Him, the guy with the respect for God, hello, the guy with the respect for God, he will still wait. You find somebody, a lot of people, they waited I remember once in Uganda, long, long, many years ago, decades ago, and they were waiting from the airport, a long row of, I don't know, 10 kilometers, because this, this guy wasn't a president, but one of the, the guys just under the president, not a minister, not a prime minister, but whatever. And then he didn't come. And they started to hear. And in this waiting, they came, became very irritated. And they start to bash the cars and this and this. Ha! Huh. Me and another guy, Skip Kriecher, the first time I went to Uganda. That was really about 25 years ago. And uh, we were in the car, in the taxi, and they were about 15 with us. And um, they just started to speak. And they just told us, put your heads between your legs, go down, go down, go down. Because it was some guy, some guys in Europe that didn't release that minister or whoever. Yeah, they had to wait, but maybe in their waiting, it's going to happen in a day or two, but it didn't happen now. Yeah, that was a quite a time of prayer for us also, I really prayed, you know, put my head between my knees and I really prayed. And then the window opened here and somebody wanted to get, and I just remember the fist here, but the angel wing just took my head there. You know, like in, on the movies, it can really happen like that, you know. So, and, and the other time the door opened here and one grabbed inside that everybody was screaming all this and pushing the guy out and <laughs> yeah it was an interesting time and the whole bus went like this <laughs> yeah then you pray 
I wonder if I must pray now. <laughs> That's not the type of thought you get then. Hmm. Hallelujah. I watch in hope for the Lord. I wait for God, my Savior, my God. Will hear me. Micah. Micah 7-7. Seven, seven. Everybody say 7-7. Seven, seven. Nearly the jackpot. But uh, nearly the jackpot is uh, I will watch in hope for the Lord. I will wait. Everybody say I will watch. I will wait. So there is no waiting without the watching. Without the right attitude of watching, of expectation. The waiting is a, just a time of religious rubbish. Don't go for a religious rubbish in your life. By waiting without the watching. Everybody say religious rubbish. When I wait. I, everybody, when I wait. Without the watching. Okay. Okay. And then last two. Do not say, I'll pay you back for this wrong. Wait for the Lord and he will help you. Proverbs 20 verse 22. Woo, some attitude. You know, when you're fed up, when you're fed up, when you're fed up, don't say, I'll pay you back for this wrong. But you can say it, the word talks about, you can say it in your heart. You can say it in your heart. You know, this guy did you wrong. And when something happens to him, you feel, oh, let me pray for him. Or maybe you say nothing and don't pray for him. May God help you. Do not say, I'll pay you back for this wrong. What must you then do? Wait for the Lord and he will help you get the right attitude. But you have issues with people. You cannot wait on God. You must wait with the right attitude. But having attitude with people the whole time, you have no waiting on God. Don't. You can pray. But you pray with the wrong attitude. What does it say? I don't know. What is the one Peter? Somewhere in New Testament. You pray, but you cannot receive because you pray with the wrong attitude. You pray with a certain motive. To do certain stuff with what I must give you in the wrong way. You must pray with the right attitude. So there's no waiting on God. It's just religious rubbish. If I cannot do it with the right attitude... Quickly, the last two uh, verses. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of, in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Attitude. That is Matthew eleven twenty nine. Matthew eleven twenty nine. Your attitude. Attitude to learn. Attitude to learn. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. You cannot have the yoke that is easy, the burden that is light. You cannot. You cannot. When you have the wrong attitude, go and fast, go and pray for, for two weeks. Hello? Go and fast and pray for two weeks. But if you have, do it with the wrong attitude, no yoke that is easy, no burden that is light. It's not possible. God must help me. God must help you. Take my yoke upon you and learn. Learn. For look at my attitude. I'm gentle and humble in heart. For I have the right attitude. So you take my yoke upon you, get the right attitude, have a teachable spirit, and look at my attitude, and then what will you see? You will find rest. You will find rest for your souls. Yoke easy, burden light. Last one, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 to 6. Yeah, 1, 2, 3, even. You can do this, you can do that, but if it's the wrong attitude, if it's not in love, waste. You can give your life, you can... Let your body be burnt, uh, low. You can let, be your, let your body be burnt, everything. But what a waste. What a waste. What a lot of noise. Laden the symbol, clinking the metal. I don't know what is that in English. What's that in English? A clanging symbol. Yeah, something like that. What a lot of noise. What a lot of noise if it's not in love, your attitude. What a lot of noise, your prayer. You have the right prayer, but the wrong attitude. What a lot of noise. You're just making a noise. Just 
Tell your friends, shut up. All right, everybody say shut up. Shut up. Okay. You can only say shut up to one person then. Oh, no, no, to one thing, and that's your flesh, okay? Not to another person. Uh, okay. Tell your flesh to shut up. Okay. If you cannot say it in love, if you cannot speak in love, if you cannot wait in love, and you pray, you wait on God, that's a lot of rubbish. God going to help you. God going to help me through attitude. Thank you, Father. God, I rest our lives that we will understand how to wait on you in prayer, how to wait on you in our thought life, in our thoughts, and how to wait on you through our attitudes. In Jesus' name, so we pray. Amen. Amen.